Hello. In this video, we are going to look at two related but different ions, the isocyanate ion, OCN minus one, and the fulminate ion, CNO minus one. So we notice that they have the same exact atoms. The only difference between the two is their connectivity. So if you want to see in this video how calculating the formal charge can give us some insight into the relative stabilities of these ions. So notice in uh, each case, we can draw a valid Lewis dot structure. And in the second line, we see uh, kind of a Venn diagram style to show that each atom actually does satisfy the octet rule for uh, each of these ions. First, we have the isocyanate ion, and we can calculate the formal charge, Fc here. It's the number of valence electrons, Z, minus the number of lone pair electrons, Lp, minus the number of bonding electrons, B, divided by 2. So uh, we can color code the particular uh, electrons that are involved in each of these cases. One thing to keep in mind is that the number of valence electrons depends only on the element and not the particular molecule. So uh, for each particular element, the number of valence electrons will be a fixed number that we can get from the periodic table. First, we will calculate the formal charge for the oxygen atom. And we'll note that uh, for oxygen always has six valence electrons. There are four lone pair electrons, which are shown in that kind of orange color. And uh, the number of bonding electrons divided by two is equal to two, shown in green. So that gives the formal charge for the element oxygen uh, in this particular molecule uh, a formal charge of zero. One thing to note is that in stable molecules, we'll expect that uh, all the atoms uh, involved will have zero formal charges, or if they have a non-zero formal charge, that the negative formal charges will be on the most electronegative elements. To find the formal charge of the carbon in isocyanate ion, we know that carbon has four valence electrons, so that's why we have the four. There are no lone pair electrons around the carbon, so that's why we have that orange zero. And there are eight bonding electrons, but if you divide that by two, we get four, so that's why the number is shown in green. So for isocyanate ion, the formal charge on carbon is also zero, just like for oxygen. We note that that is a sign generally of molecular or ionic stability. Finally, we look at the formal charge of the nitrogen atom in the isocyanate ion. Nitrogen always has five valence electrons. In this particular molecule, we see that it has four lone pair electrons, which are shown in orange. There are a total of four bonding electrons, which are shown in green, but if we divide that by two, uh, we get the number two. So that gives us a formal charge on nitrogen 
of minus 1. So we notice that it's a non-zero number, but it is a negative formal charge on a particularly electronegative element. So all these factors of the zero formal charges, or the minus 1 for nitrogen, are all consistent with stability of a molecule or ion in the uh, Lewis dot theory. Now we will look at the fulminate ion and we remind ourselves of how we calculate the formal charges. V is for valence electrons, LP is for the number of lone pair electrons, and then our B divided by 2 is the number of bonding electrons divided by 2. So first, we look for the formal charges on carbon. Carbon always has four valence electrons, hence the four. It has four lone pair electrons, shown in orange. And since there are four bonding electrons, that divided by two gives us two. So here we note that we have a formal charge of minus two on carbon, which is not even a particularly electronegative element to have a minus one, but this actually has a minus two formal charge. So that right away tells us that is a sign of uh, potential instability in a molecule or ion. Next, we want the formal charges on nitrogen, shown in that kind of blue color. Nitrogen has five valence electrons always, so that's a five. It has no lone pair electrons, and there are eight bonding electrons, so that divided by two gives us four, which is shown in green. So here we notice that we have a formal charge on nitrogen of a plus one, a positive formal charge, on a generally pretty electronegative element. That's another sign a potential instability to join the minus two, which is very, very largely negative for the not very electronegative element carbon. And finally, we look at the formal charges on oxygen in fulminate ion. It has six valence electrons. It has four lone pair electrons in this particular ion, which are shown in orange. And since there are four bonding electrons, that divided by two gives us two. So we end up with a formal charge on oxygen of zero. So the element here with the, uh, that's the most electronegative has a zero formal charge, which is okay. And generally, zero formal charges mean you have stability. But we notice that the uh, not electronegative carbon is minus two, and the electronegative nitrogen is plus one. Those are all signs that point to very high instability, which we know is true of fulminate ion and not of isocyanate ion. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.